guys, this is Jessica Gilbert and Chantel Hill. I'm here with Sunny Living and she sells houses. She's here with EXP Real Estate, but we're actually not here to talk about real estate today. We are here to talk about an abundance mindset. And I learned about this from this beautiful woman right here. We could get real woo-woo all day long. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. Chantel has been a really close friend of mine for about eight years now. We met at the grind house. So we used to wrestle each other. We, <laughs> we used to beat each other up. Um, but um, she's had some really cool jobs over the years. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the crazy jobs that you've had just to like give people an idea of who Chantel is? Yeah. So I, um, well, at one point I drag race diesel trucks. That was one of my favorite jobs as well. Um, I mean, I did other things too, but the racing part was the favorite part. For sure. <laughs> um, and then I, was a an exotic animal trainer for mm -hmm. Seabrook Bush Gardens, and at the same time, I decided to have a daycare, which that's when I found out that <laughs> <laughs> children and animals are a lot alike, and you just have different <laughs> reinforcements that you use. Um, but it's a lot of the same zookeeping, uh, and that also triggered a podcast that I do uh, called The Domestic Zookeeper. And also while I was doing the animal training and daycare, I went to school for massage therapy, mm -hmm. became a licensed massage therapist. Um, I did that while I was in Texas and it was more of like a chair massage type mm -hmm. area, but I got to people watch um with that one so it was super for fun. sure yeah i bet you saw some interesting people in texas um, super interesting <laughs> and military folks they're some of my favorites but always different varied backgrounds so it was very fun to watch sure um and then yeah now i'm doing real estate every time my husband deploys i pick up a new <laughs> a new job yeah you keep so. yourself busy <laughs> that's for sure yeah. um well before you started your real estate career you were very successful at massage mm -hmm. and what drew you to being self-employed in the massage space uh, I think especially in the massage space, I did not particularly like the atmosphere or the culture around salons and spas. It was very like clicky sure. and gossip. And I just, that's not what I'm about. Um, and I like setting my own schedule. <laughs> I don't like other people telling me what to do. Yeah, totally. <laughs> if you met someone considering a career in massage, what is one piece of advice you would give them? Uh, take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a much better therapist and able to care and give consideration to your clients mm -hmm. when you are already taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, all of that. Mm -hmm. So you're just a way better person in general. So. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty guilty of not taking great care of myself. I actually had brought that up in biz yeah, today. We talked about um, today. <laughs> I, I'm really good at taking care of other people, but not so great at taking care of myself. Right. So sometimes I have to remind myself of that. Yes, um, we all do. <laughs> yeah. I think most people who are empaths are that way. Um, 100%. What made you decide to start a uh, career in real estate? Um, I'd like to say a whim, but <laughs> I just saw real estate as another avenue of helping people. And at the same time as I was in the class, I was also buying our, well, my husband and I were buying our first house, but he was still deployed. Sure. And so just knowing kind of like how tricky and cumbersome that whole process was, I thought, well, maybe I could reach more people and be able to help in other ways. I think there's not just one way to do something, mm -hmm. um, but that it was a way for me to help people with one of the largest purchases of their life. <laughs> for sure. It's a pretty big deal. So Yeah. Well, and you've been instrumental in my decision to start in real estate oh, as well. And I, I think it. our reasons are very <laughs> similar. I just, I love being able to take care of people, especially in my cleaning business. When I started with just move out cleans, my favorite part was, letting people into their new home and getting to see it. Uh, it's, it's like such a good feeling knowing that you help them in such a tangible way. And what better way to help them than to make sure that the single most important investment that they have yes. is done right and taken care of from every single step of the way. So you did a great job selling my house oh, and buying you. our house. So <laughs> she, if you need an awesome realtor, sh uh, Chantel. So, um, I'm blushing. So, <laughs> Thank you. Um, what is your favorite part of your job? 
Uh, I think like you said, seeing people's faces when they finally are able to move into their home of their dreams, uh, just knowing that everything is going to be okay, or just the relief that they get when it's all done, <laughs> because it is pretty stressful. Even if it's oh, exciting stress, it's still stressful. For sure. It was so draining for us. Yeah. But. And so just being able to, you know, give them that home and thinking about the memories they're going to create there and the life that they're going to live. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Chantel, so uh, she gets very emotionally invested with, uh, with our home purchase. She was like on the same roller coaster ride with us. It was, it was a doozy. I, but said, she... I tend to attach myself to all of my buyers, even sellers, but I'm like, oh, and we could do this if you want. Or like, I, I almost see myself living in one of their rooms. Well, I think that just <laughs> makes you really empathetic. I think that's a good character. Yeah. Character to have in um, in a realist in a realtor. Um, what's your least favorite part of your job? Oh, having to deliver bad news oh, for um, sure. When things just don't go as planned or unforeseen circumstances. Um, yeah, the bad news having to deliver that. Uh, but I try to find ways to deliver it with hopefully a solution. Yeah. Um, try to sandwich the bad with like good on both sides so that um, it's not, I don't know. I, tried to I think you do that before. well. I think you're able to cushion the blow a little bit. Right. So there were some bumps in the road for us right. and you were able to navigate that very smoothly. So I appreciate that. Yes. Um, I hope to be able to learn that. From I know. <laughs> I fortunately, um, having been a business owner, I too have had to navigate that. So you right. learn to just let things roll off your back and not take things so personally. Right. Um, 100%. So now that we've gotten to know you a little bit, I really want to just discuss the abundance mindset, um, especially in your industry. There are so many realtors and it can get a really competitive. So, uh, but you are so gracious about not getting your feelings hurt if somebody doesn't work with you because there's so many people out there and right. that's all about mindset. Can you just talk a little bit about oh, why that. that's so important <laughs> yes, in any field? To. It doesn't necessarily have to be real estate, but yeah. there's enough work for everybody. If you started a business, but somebody's already started, it doesn't matter. There's room for you. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. just, I'll let you dive in. <laughs> okay, definitely. It's one of my favorite topics actually. Um, and especially in real estate, there's a lot of realtors who don't necessarily see bringing other realtors on as they see it as competition. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I think, um, again, it's the mindset when you have other realtors, that's going to open up possibilities for other listings, all these things. It just, what is all ships rise? In a yes. Tide? It, <laughs> rising tides raises <laughs> all ships. Raises that's all a ships. Dave Ramsey quote. I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he stole it from somebody else, but that's where I heard it. Right. From. Right. And so I just I think that there's enough business to go around for mm -hmm. everybody and different personalities attract different buyers and sellers. So um, there's always enough. And when you are in a scarcity mindset, then you're always going to see that there's not enough. There's, yeah. Um, and we can all get in those ruts where we think that, um, like I often, one of my pitfalls is thinking there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. <laughs> but Yeah. It's I all about perspective. Just, yeah. It is. And I have to just recognize that I'm falling into that and uh, reset. Um, I have different ways to reset those things. And so that I try to keep that mindset because when you are open to receiving, then more flows in. Um, and also with the like real estate part too, there's when I was looking into the homes for heroes, that was when I looked at the program and then I wanted to check other realtors, what they thought about it, if they'd heard of it. Mm -hmm. um, can you just, to backpedal, can you just explain Home for Heroes real quick in case somebody doesn't understand what that program yes. is? Okay, good idea. <laughs> so Homes for Heroes is a program where veterans, teachers, EMT, fire, medical, um, basically any service, lo those hero service industries, uh, if you use a Homes for Heroes affiliated realtor to buy, then you get a portion of that commission back um, after closing. Mm -hmm. And when you use a affiliated realtor to sell, you save a portion of that commission. Um, and it's not a ton. I think it's like 20, 25% 
um, of the Realtors Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, you know, it's not a ton, um, but it can help, especially for new buyers for sure that could buy a couch that could buy a washer dryer set exactly. i mean there's all kinds of things that an extra two grand three grand can help with exactly. i mean moving gets expensive so the fact that you're willing to share that mm -hmm. with your buyers or sellers is very again speaks to the abundance mindset rather than holding on so tightly to that money right. and saying no this is my commission i am not going to allow anybody into that so when i talk to other realtors about it that's what i got <laughs> exactly <laughs> right they were um so afraid of giving any portion of their commission up uh, because they're like well i have all these fees and i'm like well yes <laughs> there's that just kind of comes along with it but i think I look at it as uh, there's really not a better way for me to be able to give back to these industries or these people who put their lives on the line in some cases um, to do what they do. Mm -hmm. And it's going back to your clients. Like it's not going back to like a charity that you you don't know who gets to receive the money or anything. Right. Um, so I just again the way you look at things well and wouldn't you think that somebody who has received a two thousand dollar check from their realtor is going to tell everybody they know that yeah this person's amazing i they not only did they help me navigate buying and selling a home but i also got three thousand dollars out of their commission for having worked with them right. so holding on to the idea that giving up those commissions will cost you is kind of counterproductive. It 100% is very counterintuitive because when you give more, you receive more. For sure. <laughs> and that's just... Uh, well, even in the cleaning industry, I think a lot of people think that I don't want other cleaners to do well. And that's so not the case. Mm -hmm. I am friends with the majority of the professional cleaners that have really good, strong reputations because I would see them posted on all the same threads that I was getting put or tagged on for, hey, I'm looking for a cleaner for this, this, and this. And I'm like, oh, look at them. They're doing good. Look how good they're taking right. care of their people because they are getting tagged on all these things. I like I've formed relationships and friendships with some of these people. So if I can't take care of them, I know one of my friends is going to be able to. And right. that's just because there's so much work out there. There's so much so many houses to be cleaned. I can't take care of everybody. Exactly. And I want that person to be taken care of. I want them to be taken care right. of by somebody that's local. I know it's going to do a good job. I don't want them to go to somebody like a big box store and then mm -hmm. who knows what's going to happen to them. Right. So. When you, especially like in a referral business, such as like cleaning and real estate, you want to make sure that who you're sending them to is going to take care of them just as well as you would, or if not better than you would. For sure. And especially like when it comes to like time and stuff. Um, and within real estate, we all work together. Mm -hmm. So those relationships are really important um, to have those. And yeah, like I want all realtors to do well because it yeah. just does, everybody does well because of that. And um, otherwise, how am I going to find all these other houses for these buyers? Like, right. And kind of like the market we're in right now, we have lots of buyers um, and there are sellers. Sometimes we just have to find them off market. Right. That's another thing. Is yeah. I tell my buyers, I'm like, yes, it is a seller's market, but it doesn't mean we can't find you the perfect house. Right. And we can look in other places we can door knock i'm not afraid to go door knocking yeah. and find these people a house like, yeah you need somebody that has no shame like, yeah, yeah totally find somewhere you want to live and we will go door knocking and we'll find out if anybody wants to sell yeah no <laughs> doubt so, i mean that's how you get it done um yeah. can you give an example of how your mindset determined the outcome of a situation cool um and I know you said this to me a long time ago. I thought about it before, but I can't remember which example I was going to use. Oh, um, yeah. I, I emailed this to you a while ago. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, I also just have short-term memories. So, <laughs> um, let, well, we could even, well, we could even talk about yours. Sure. Um, even just... So, like, the first house that we had been under contract on, like, that was, you know, it easily you guys were feeling uneasy about it mm -hmm. and I could have just been like oh gosh no this is terrible but instead I was empathetic and was like okay if you're feeling at all like uneasy about this like 
then like take a step back and it's okay if we did lose earnest money or anything like that it might be worth it to get out of um something that you're just not comfortable with or 100 percent on board with mm -hmm. and um i feel like a lot of realtors can get into a mindset where they think they just have to make the sale and like try to close and do all these things mm -hmm. rather than thinking about taking a step back and thinking about how it feels from their client's perspective or mm -hmm. their buyers and thinking about, well, what is it that's making you uneasy about it? Right. Is it something we can work through? Um, just really slow playing things as yeah, best you can. For and sure. And well, I think fast decisions are where you can get yourself into trouble. So it's nice having somebody to be the sounding board for you right. so that you can say, hey, these are what I'm scared of. This is what's making me nervous. Right. And like, you, then you talk us off the ledge, like, right. hey, things are okay. It's okay. No worries. So. <laughs> right. And again, the mindset, like I try to find the bright side, like here's the worst case. I like to know what the worst case is mm -hmm. because oftentimes that won't be what happens. Right. Um, but it's nice to be aware of like, yes, we could lose your earnest money. They could, I don't know, all these other things, but here are options to make sure that that doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then anything seems better after you know what the worst case is. <laughs> well, in my mind always goes to the worst case scenario first, because I'm a natural worrier. So yeah. I just, I cannot help it. But for me, it like mentally prepares myself. I'm like, okay, well, if this is the worst thing that could happen, I'm ready for it. <laughs> right, right. So you're ready for it. And then when it doesn't, you're like, okay. Exactly. So bad. Now I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> right. All right, cool. No big deal. Right. And then we got you into the uh, better house of your dream city. Anyway, I, so. I mean, it all worked out. I was scared to sign on the dotted line for one house. And then I'm glad I listened to that feeling right. because we ended up with, like you said, a better house and a good friend of ours actually still ended up with that yes, house. So how did. funny. Yes. Like, it was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's discuss the power of words and how saying something can actually bring it into existence. It's almost creepy when you start noticing how your words have energy and start putting balls into motion just when speaking or just by speaking whether the outcome is good or bad. Do you have any examples of where you thought or spoke something and then it happened? Yes. Um, so I also believe quite heavily in manifesting or manifestation too. Mm -hmm. um, and even like what you put your thoughts towards is where your energy goes. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it's negative, um, if you have a person that you don't like, let's just say, because everybody has somebody that they maybe don't agree with or whatnot. Um, but when you like, if you wish ill on them, like, especially if they're doing really well mm -hmm. and you wish ill on them, you're saying like, I don't want that. I don't want that success or whatever it is that they have even. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very powerful. <laughs> um, but I do uh, like to, I like to journal and um, I like to write things. Mm -hmm. So I, oh, I don't know if I want to, um, I'll say that I, I had a goal of a certain amount that I wanted to make with real estate. Mm -hmm. And I would write, I am grateful and um what did I say? It's been a minute. <laughs> I would say I'm grateful and what was the other word that I said? Comfortable making over a certain amount. I won't say what amount. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, and I would just say that in real estate specifically. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you when I got my 1099 for this year, I was like, oh, I like superseded that goal. So Dang. I was like, there you go. Well, like um, you said, you spoke it into yeah. existence. And I think the key for it, though, is having gratitude for it first mm -hmm. and actually just like imagining where you're at with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not to say that I don't have much to show for it now. I'm like, I also must have spent that much. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, just having the gratitude, I think really, because when you're already grateful for something, it's just going to show up and for sure. happen for you. Yeah. I think when you're not content in where you are, it makes you even more so because you, I mean, you're just going to amplify the feelings that you're feeling. If you're yeah, just grateful. Better. Yeah. If you're grateful for the things that you do have in your life, then more good things are going to come your way. Right. Um, so what you resist persists. And yeah. That's so 
I, I watched a lot of Kim Duramo and mind body TV. Um, and kind of one of the ways that she's explained it is that like, you also kind of have to just let go of whatever might be holding you back and mindset issues. Mm -hmm. And you have to first acknowledge it and recognize that you have a mindset block or anything, um, emotional or money beliefs, even for sure. Um, that's a big one for people. It, depends on how you grew up, what yeah. kind of beliefs you've inherited. Yeah. Um, and so once you can recognize those, it's much easier to let them go. Mm -hmm. And then, so I like to think of it as like hands. So when you have these beliefs, your hands are like all full of these beliefs, but when you recognize them, you're like, Oh, this is this, I have, I have these things. And when you recognize them, you can actually like let them go. And then your hands, you're open to receive mm -hmm. all of the good. So Yes. <laughs> Whereas with a closed hand, you cannot receive. Right. Yes. And that's society too. Like we're so used to like fighting everything, fight cancer, fight this, fight mm -hmm. that. It's just resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole other rabbit hole I can get into. Oh, I know. But... <laughs> yeah. We could, we could spend a whole other hour just talking about politics. Let's yes. not do that. Right. Though. Well, um, especially like bodies and stuff too. And yeah, it's just all kinds of let's okay so what is a scarcity mindset and how does it hold you back i think we did talk a little bit about that but yeah. let's just delve back onto that just for a second right yeah so especially um like we'll take the real estate for example uh when i talk to i've, I've talked to several realtors and they're like no please don't like get anybody else to become a realtor there's already like thousands of us well, like, that's blah, we all everybody already knows like five realtors like, okay, but if you get other realtors in, they know other people, mm -hmm. they can bring these listings that might be the perfect house for a buyer that you have. Right. Like, I just, everything's connected. Everybody's relationships are different. And right. so, yeah, when you're thinking though, that like, oh, if I bring another realtor into the business, that's just less business for me. Mm -hmm. Uh that's going to be what it causes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like you said, there, there might be somebody that somebody new can reach that they never would have been able to reach. And then that house is now available for one of their buyers. And that would have never been possible had that new agent not started. So 100%. So fingers crossed guys. Hopefully I get people who yes. want to buy and sell with me soon. You <laughs> I got to get my license first. I'm just you waiting. Just <laughs> I'm grateful for the clients that are coming my way here in the future. <laughs> yes. Thank you. See, exactly right. So starting with that mindset right now. Yes. Um, if you could give people considering starting a business uh, advice on abundance mindset, what would that one piece of advice be? Gratitude. Just gratitude. Grateful for what you do have. Be grateful for what you are going to have. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's honestly the key. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, this doesn't have to be business related, but if you could give one piece of advice to somebody, what would it be? Oh, jeez, I did not remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> should have thought about this. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. Um, honestly, the gratitude uh, take care of yourself and relationships and everything else will follow. I think. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that they all kind of play hand in hand when you're grateful, uh, you have great, strong relationships. You're not seeing things as a competition. Mm -hmm. Uh, so comparison is like the biggest thief of joy. I don't know who said that, but I think that might be Rachel Ramsey. Maybe. Yeah. Or Rachel Cruz. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Rachel right. Cruz. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, it, it is so true. Like, mm -hmm. especially uh, in social media, it's great to step back from that mm -hmm. um, and not because it is kind of hard to compare or like not compare yourself, well, especially with social media. Right. I mean, everybody just shows the highlight reel. Yeah. So. And it can be very toxic to just be comparing yourself to other people. Um, there's goals to strive for, but 
again, gratitude. <laughs> I mean, I, that's I'll just solid that. advice. Yeah. I mean, I think if more people were grateful, I think that the world would look a lot different than it does right now. 100%. So. All right. Well, I think that's about all we can really talk about abundance. So thank you so much for talking about that. The reason I've been trying to focus on interviews lately is because not everybody has the same network that I do. I am surrounded by amazing people who inspire me and uplift me and help me think differently from how I would normally think. So I just want other people to have that same access. So I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate this is this. Chantel Hill with EXP Realty. I am Jessica Gilbert with Sunny Living. Make sure you like and subscribe before you go. And buy a house from Jess. Yes, or Chantel. <laughs> She's got the license still. <laughs> Thank you.